The topic of my speech tonight is taking care of loved ones. Um, it's a speech related to health. Everyone has health issues sometime or another, and sometimes they develop somewhat unexpectedly and unnoticed. Uh, there are basically three skills, I think, that people should have to be able to take care of their loved ones, and the skills are on the board. The first one is to be inquisitive. Ask demanding questions, asking pro probing questions. The other one is to listen. Sometimes you have to listen very carefully. The third one is to be vigilant. And that means watching out, especially for your children, and uh, being alert. I'm going to share with you a little story, a uh, personal story. Uh, uh, my, uh, as you may know from my icebreaker speech, I have three children. Two of my children at, uh, about six years ago were going to UC San Diego. My older one, Antonia, was, just came back from Italy. She was a senior at UC, at, uh, USC San Diego. And my son was uh, a sophomore. And they're both engineering students. They're both kind of reserved, someone like me, because they're also engineers. <laughs> um, so UC San Diego is in La Jolla. It's a beautiful campus, but it's about two hours drive from our home. And it, uh, uh, so they didn't come home too often. In fact, they didn't even call too often. So we made it a point to call them, which I'm sure people can relate to that. <laughs> so we made it a point to call them almost every other day. Six years ago, we called uh, on Monday. We called my son, Matthew, and asked him how he was doing. Matthew, how are you? And he says, hi, Mom and Dad, I'm fine. The usual thing, he's fine, everybody's fine. Call my daughter, the same thing. It's like a repeat. Uh, <laughs> trying to get information out of them is almost impossible. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Wednesday, we called again and called Matthew first, and he said the uh, uh, same. I'm not going to bore you with the dialogue. But, uh, he said uh, he did. Uh, we said the same thing, but he volunteered one, one additional bit of information. He was going to drive up, drive up to San Francisco to go juggling because he's a juggler and there's a vessel up there. Okay, call my daughter. Nothing. Everything is great. Then on Friday we called. We called again at 7 o'clock or so and talked to Matthew and the usual dialogue. But then he offered the fact that he was a little, he had a little bit of, of a flu and was uh, drinking a lot of Gatorade to get over the flu. And he also asked, Can I, uh, how do I get glasses? Just because he had blurred vision. Well, it's kind of a surprise to me. He's never complained about a blurred vision. Uh, but on the other hand, he's the only one in the family that doesn't wear glasses, so. Mm -hmm. And he had assured us that he was fine. Then we talked to my daughter the same evening, Antonia, and everything was fine and everything. And then at, uh, at the conclusion of the speech of our little discussion, I said, well, how's Matthew doing? Well, Matthew's not doing too good. He didn't go to school today. He's been at home sleeping and um, so, we concluded our speech, our, our discussion, and I called Matthew, and I kind of scolded him a bit for not telling us that he didn't go to school. He never missed school. And he said, no, he's doing fine. He's got a flu. He's, he's getting over it. He's still going to San Francisco um, and drinking a lot of Gatorade to get over it. And uh, on the previous discussion, he had said he, that he was freaking going to the uh, restroom. And so I said, oh, no, you had diarrhea. He says, I don't have diarrhea. He says, why? But you told me you had diarrhea. He said, no, I just keep going to the bathroom. I keep going to pee. So that also sounded weird. I, I hear that with older men, but never with younger, <laughs> younger kids. <laughs> so that was puzzling. So we concluded our discussion, and I called my daughter again. I said, something sounds really strange. I don't know what it is, but something strange with your brother. Do you suggest that we go to see a doctor? And she said yes, without any argument. And uh, we talked, and she, I asked her to go to urgent care that evening or 
the next day. And uh, we concluded our discussion about 11 o'clock that evening. I get a call from my daughter saying that she had taken Matthew to the urgent care at UC San Diego. He was transferred to the hospital and he had a medical condition. And she asked if I needed to, if I wanted to talk to the doctor. And I said, yeah. So she passed me over to the doctor. The doctor said that Matthew had diabetes. It was a, a, a obvious diagnosis, but wasn't sure if it was type one or type two. But things looked like in two, uh, 24 hours, 48 hours, his blood level would be stabilized and he would be released. The next morning, we drove up there. That was a Saturday. And we went to see him, and his vision was still blurry. I kind of get, I kind of joked with him. I said, you really wanted to drive up to San Francisco in the condition you're in? <laughs> he could hardly, his, his uh, pupils were dilated quite a bit. But he was getting better, and uh, he said he was going to go up to San Francisco, which is kind of scary thought, but and he probably would have. Anyway, we went home that night, and um, the next day, Saturday, Sunday, uh, we got a call from my daughter. She said that Matthew had been uh, given instruction on how to administer in insulin for the first time. And he gave insulin to himself that just as we were talking. And when my wife heard that, of course, she uh, was a little bit unhappy and uh, sobbed a bit, but not for very long, because we're all happy that he was doing fine now. So, going back to my principles here, if we weren't inquisitive, if we hadn't listened very carefully, as you can see this, how the story evolves, if we hadn't been, third one there, vigilant, uh, keeping a watchful eye on him, things would have been quite a bit different. If my daughter had still been overseas in Italy, and because she was uh, overseas for a year, things would have been different. If they hadn't picked up their phone, which they rarely pick up these days, <laughs> things would have been different. <laughs> so, we were, we're, we're glad that uh, he, he was okay. His blood sugar level was over 1100. Um, if, some, if we hadn't done that, he probably would have gone into a coma that night. Friday night, that is. So I've learned a lot about diabetes in the last uh, few years. One of the things that I did learn is juvenile diabetes attacks younger people. My, my son is tall and slender. It also, the one thing you don't do if you have diabetes is you don't drink Gatorade because it's full of sugar. <laughs> and the other thing is if you have vision, um, sudden vision changes, if you have uh, frequent urination, it's a good sign you've got diabetes. So, in summary, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, develop these skills, because oftentimes health issues develop completely unnoticed. I don't think